Lawyers, what's in all that isn't real, that normal people insist exists? It's in all that exists, but widely misunderstood, is the concept of entrapment. If the police put a bait vehicle in a high crime area, that is not entrapment. If the police are watching a bar known to overserve to see if there are impaired drivers at the end of the night, that is not entrapment. Entrapment only occurs when a gov agent suggests committing a crime that you were not otherwise going to commit. The case that really set the court precedent for this was wild. FBI agents were badgering this farmer to buy porn for months, and finally he was like sure, whatever. Wham. Jail time. I believe it was cleared, but damn, was that dirty. Edit. So here is the Wikipedia article on it. So the US Postal Service began a sting operation to catch people for trying to buy child pornography in 1985. I thought it was just normal porn, and when all porn was illegal, I was mistaken. The set the sting on him three times, and only in the third time did he actually try to buy a magazine of porn of 11 to 14 year olds. It was determined that this constituted entrapment and was something of a landmark case because they ruled in his favor. An arrest isn't magically invalidated if the police don't read you your rights on the spot. There could be a whole thread of just misconceptions people have from watching cop TV. Miranda rights protect you from self-incrimination when being questioned by the police for a crime. It doesn't mean they have to Miranda you the second you get arrested. If you errand questioned then it doesn't apply. People also think it's illegal not to let them make a phone call after being arrested. It's federal law in the US that a plainclothes or undercover police officer has to identify themselves as law enforcement if asked. No, it's not the law, and they can tell you whatever the duck they want. I'm reminded of that Breaking Bad cold open where Badger gets arrested for selling product to an undercover officer because of this exact made up law lol. We my father, who is a lawyer, policemen cannot lie to you. This is false. They can and they do. Edit, there's so many replies that I cannot even find some of the ones I'd like to respond to, so I want to leave a general note for those who have asked for a reference. Frazier vs Cup is the Supreme Court ruling that affirmed the legality of deceptive interrogation tactics in 1969. The ruling is still active. I heard you were smuggling animals. What are you, a cop? Uh. In California, it's not illegal to discuss your wages with your co-workers, despite what your boss might say. Edit, I'm a lawyer in California. I omit the same in the other 49 states, but don't want to speculate. It's actually illegal nationally for a company to retaliate for discussing wages. They typically just make up some other bullshit reason to fire you instead. People that think it's illegal to be videotaped in a public space. I saw someone on next door complaining about my reasonable right to privacy in a public place when someone was shaming 20 people standing together waiting for takeout. Sorry that's the opposite of how it works. Driving with interior overhead car lights on is not illegal. Edit. Thanks for the gold, kind stranger. My first. I had an experience with this. Got pulled over as a very new driver, 16, because my interior lights were on. The car and I were so new to each other I didn't know all of the controls, and I had just left a bright parking lot. No laws broken, but the cop told me he stopped me for suspicion of DUI, because it's an indicator of impaired driving. It's indicative of lack of attention. No laws against driving barefoot. Mandatory addition, in the US. In Germany, while appropriate footwear is not directly required, you can be found at fault if your choice of footwear or lack thereof leads to your inability to avert an accident. Probate attorney here. I've had many people ask me when the reading of the will is going to take place. I explain to them that only happens in movies. But one of these days I'm going to have one and hire a mysterious blonde wearing a veil to sit in the corner quietly. Then I'll tell everyone that she inherits everything. Provided, of course, that she must adopt the decedent's cute but troublemaking six-year-old child no one knew about. Or she can spend the night in a haunted house. Her choice. There will now be a requirement for such a mysterious lady's presence at the reading of my will, written into my will. Along with a handful of burly yet solemn fellows, dressed in stereotypical gym and attire, complete with sunglasses and earpieces.
one will be Russian, or at least able to fake the accent consistently, and should only be curtly acknowledged by the others. Every one of them should be entirely vague about how they knew me except from business, and the men should all refuse to acknowledge the presence of the veiled woman, and feign terror, if compelled to look at her. In the UK, that it is illegal to drink under the age of 18. You can buy alcohol with a meal at 16, beer, wine, see idea, and you are not breaking any laws if you give your child some alcohol in the privacy of your own home, and they are over the age of 5. Edit, at 16 you have to be accompanied by an adult, and it is paid for by the adult. Thanks you slash Kellisk. You can buy alcohol with a meal, but do restaurants have a final say as to whether or not they'll serve it? In the UK, it's not illegal to park on someone else's drive way. It's classified as trespassing, a civil offense, not criminal, which means the police can't do anything. This particularly surprises people as many think that they have exclusive rights to the parking outside their house as well. What recourse do you have? As a former lawyer, UK, I lost count of the amount of people that thought jaywalking was a crime. Unless it's a road that specifically states no pedestrians or a motorway, no such offense exists here. Edit. To clarify I'm talking about it not being a crime in the UK, it may well be elsewhere, Australia, USA, Germany and others. Too much American media, it technically is a crime in America, so people think it applies in other places. The one that is the most frustrating to me, even though it's not really a specific claim that a particular law exists, more a rule of evidence, is that's just hearsay. You have no evidence. Comes up all the time, in all kinds of contexts. Even lawyers love using it when it suits them, nothing but hearsay and speculation. Usually, what people mean when they say that is don't believe them. They're lying. Which, fair enough, but that's not what hearsay means. Lots of evidence is just a person talking. That's what a witness is. It's why testimony exists. It's not not evidence, just because it's a person talking. Hearsay just means that in most cases, you can't have person A say that person B said is, in order to prove that this actually is true. Hearsay, get it? I heard B say it. It just means your witness can only talk about things they actually know about. And, extremely importantly, it also doesn't count as hearsay when person B is actually the person on the other side of the case. Person A is totally allowed to say person B told me yes, I will commit the crime on Tuesday, if person B is the defendant, who has been accused of committing the crime on Tuesday. You don't get to complain it's hearsay, if you're the one who supposedly said the thing they heard. Close bracket. This should be higher. People don't seem to be aware that a single person testifying about what they saw happened can often be decisive evidence on its own. This isn't exactly what you're asking for, but I think it's valuable for people to know you do not need to wait 24 hours to report someone as missing. I would hope not, since every cop drama I've ever watched says the first 48 hours are the most important. If someone has to wait 24 hours, they lost 24 hours of that 48. US, ex-lawyer here, there is no law that requires the police to provide you with their name and badge number when asked. There may be internal policies, but it's not the law. There is also no law that requires the police to get a supervisor if demanded. Again, policy vs law. There is no law that allows you to question whether an order given by the police is lawful or not. A court has to decide if the order was lawful after the fact, but there are laws to punish you if you do not comply. Edit, while wow, this blew up. Thanks for the good conversation and gold, truly honored. Quick updates, someone pointed out that in New York there is a law that requires cops to ID themselves and have a card, which is fantastic. Thank you for correcting the statement. A lot of folks seem to be concerned that no law meant no rules, so to clarify, a lot of things are actually managed via internal policies. Those policies usually have teeth, so no, the police are not interested in just violating them and losing their jobs etc. Last note, thanks for the civil discourse, a lot of these threads get reduced to flames quickly, and by far the comments have been productive and thought provoking. You guys really are awesome. I've tried to respond to questions, and will continue to, as long as you think it's useful.
Second edit, since this has come up a lot, I identify as an ex-lawyer, because I do not practice law anymore. Attorneys are admitted to practice law under the rules of the bar in their state, state bar. I left the state that I was admitted to when I changed careers and did not maintain the continuing legal education requirements to maintain my standing with the bar in the state that I left, nor did I seek admission to the bar in my new state. I am technically ineligible to practice until I complete clerics and recertify with the bar of my old state, but I have no intention of doing that. So, in short, ex-lawyer. Thanks again. So what method is there, if any, to confirm an officer's identity? Asking because I live in a high trafficking area that has had multiple instances of people being abducted by fake cops in unmarked vehicles and the common advice around here is to ask for their badge number before even rolling down your window fully. Now that I think of it anyone with half a brain could figure out how to make up an accurate sounding badge number though. Edit. This comment now has twice as many likes as my top actual post. Always knew that I would beat the old record, but definitely not talking about something this dark lol. Paralegal. A lot of people think that the law requires you to be a good decent person. If I'm sitting on a bench and see a blind person about to walk into the path of a bus, it's completely legal for me in the United States to remain silent, take my cell phone out and take a video of his death. It's even legal for me to profit from the video. I'd be a monster for doing it, but there's no law imposing a duty on me to tell this stranger, watch out for that bus. You should never tell a blind guy to watch out for a bus. Negligent motorcycle driver forced me to hit him from behind with my car I was young and naive at the time, never been in an accident until then, guy makes me sign a paper that says that the accident is my fault because I hit from behind and wanted compensation I explained the situation to my dad and he concluded that the guy was obstructing normal traffic and I had no option but to hit him from behind in the particular circumstance the guy ended. Up taking us to court, showed the judge the piece of paper that I signed, I explained that I signed it under duress, and that he explained that by law, whoever hits from behind is responsible for the accident judge looked him in the eye, and asked him if that's true, he said yes, then she asked him to point out which law states that, he just shut the duck up duck that guy, although it usually is the case, that the person is at fault, you are correct it isn't always the case. Reminds me of something that happened with my mom. She was at a junction waiting to turn into a main road. The junction was on a slope. She hadn't engaged the handbrake properly and rolled backwards into the car behind her. There was a little bit of damage, but she knew she was at fault and gave the other person her insurance and contact details. She never heard from them. We reckon they thought the insurance would see it as their fault and decided to just pay for the minor damage themselves. I'm no lawyer, but I don't feel like most of the villains in Scooby-Doo committed any actual crime. I don't think it's against the law to put on a mask and scare some trespass on your own property. What if there's an abandoned gold mine underneath it? Sovereign citizen stuff. I feel like enough folks have claimed to be sovereign citizens that it's become normal. But no, generally you can't declare yourself exempt from the laws in effect where you are. My first job while in school was as a law clerk was to respond to pro se writs of habeas corpus from prisoners. One of the first ones I was given was to respond to a guy that claimed he was falsely imprisoned because he had sovereign immunity. He had changed his name to Jesus Christ and claimed that because he was a sovereign, he was not subject to our laws anymore and needed to be released. I remember being very flummoxed on how to respond. I spent entirely too much time on that reply. You can go 10 over the speed limit. My dad thought this was true as he was new to the country and quickly found out by a speeding ticket that it was not. Edit. I'm now realizing that this is may vary from state to state and county to county. For my case, South Florida generally tolerates 10 over but is still technically illegal. This comes from the margin of error of speed radars. They have a 5 mile margin of error normally and thus people feel it's safe to go 5 over. If you're only going 5 over and get a ticket, you should contest it and make sure to ask when the gun was last calibrated. Good Samaritan laws aren't nearly as broad as people think. For context, I work in emergency services. 
Some people believe that I was trying to help are the magic words that can get them out of any sticky situation. Edit. Good some laws vary by country and state, and the medical examples are a little more black and white than others. Adding a non-medical example of what I'm talking about imagine you're driving your car and notice someone on the side of the road who needs help. As you swerve off the road to provide assistance to this person in need, you incidentally run over a child on the sidewalk. After the situation is over, you're definitely not free from the consequences of running over the child with your car, just because you had good intentions of helping someone else. Versions of that story have occurred, and the drivers have tried to use a good Samaritan defense, because they meant well. There is absolutely some gray area on the subject, but if your unprompted action undoubtedly makes the situation worse than if you've done nothing, having good intentions is not a get out of jail free card, and a bunch of people don't understand that concept. When I moved to Okinawa as a teenager in the 90s, dad in the marines, we were told that if someone got in an accident, off base, that we shouldn't help them, since we could be sued or go to jail if the person died. I believe this is no longer the case in Japan, but as an Eagle Scout back then it just blew my mind that I shouldn't give CPR to someone in need. It really bothered me, and I told myself that I would still do the right thing if something happened. Fortunately never had to find out if I would have held to that. Even how many people think so, there has actually never been a Danish law allowing you to beat up a Swede with a stick if he should walk across the ice on Orison during winter. But, even though the law has never existed, it doesn't mean it shouldn't. No jury would convict you. Freedom of speech in my country. That's from watching too many US movies. In Canada it's pretty common for people to parrot American laws as if they were their own. In my country some people believe they can press charges against someone. You can't. You report a crime and the police decide if they are taking it further. It's not up to you where the charges are brought. You may want charges brought, but the police drop the case. Alternatively you can refuse to press charges and the police can bring a case anyway. It's harder without the victim or witness cooperation, but they still can. You do have a right to civil cases of course, but when people say press charges they believe they can do this via the police. US prosecutor here. In my state, there actually is a mechanism to file a private criminal complaint. Very few people have heard of it, but those that have are often mentally ill and or conspiracy theorists. Our process is the person files the private criminal complaint with the prosecutor's office. The prosecutor can then either adopt the case and file formal criminal charges, or go in front of a judge with the person and convince the judge that the charges should not proceed. Technically, the judge could force the prosecutor to proceed, but I've never seen it happen. I've also only seen one private criminal complaint get adopted formally. When a private complaint is dismissed by the judge, the person usually files five more complaints against the prosecutor, the head prosecutor, the judge, the president judge, sometimes the governor, the president, etc. Then a substitute prosecutor has to come in to dismiss the complaints, which causes a whole new round of private complaints being filed. They are almost always a waste of time, but many times they are at least entertaining. In the UK, people often claim that if an item is listed for sale in a shop then the shop legally has to sell it to you at that price. This is not true at all underscore as the shop doesn't have underscore to sell you anything at any price. Often as a gesture of goodwill shops will honor erroneous prices, but they are under absolutely no obligation to do so. Back when I had a goldfish, R.I.P. Carol, I went to Pets at Home to buy him a bigger tank. It rang through at 0, 0, 0. Check out girl raises an eyebrow, we share a laugh. She messes about with the system a bit more, but all she gets is 0, 0, 0. So she calls her supervisor. We wait a few minutes. A few more. The queue is building behind me. Eventually she shrugs, prints a receipt for 0, 0, 0, and sends me on my way with my free fish tank. Good day for me and Carol. Edit, so glad my most upvoted post is one about my old fishy friend. Also thanks for the little blobby guild thing. I'm not sure if this would technically be a law or not, but the way tax brackets work, 
I've repeatedly heard people in retail or construction say something to the effect of, I'm going to turn down this shift, because if I take it it'll go up into the next tax bracket, and so will pay more in extra taxes than I will earn from taking the shift. The tax system is specifically designed not to do this. Here's an example of how tax brackets actually work. Say there is a tax bracket at $10, 000. The rate below $10,000 is 5% and the rate above $10,000 is 10%. People seem to think that if they earn $9,999, they will pay 5% of that $499.95 in taxes but that if they earn $10,001, they will pay 10% of that $1,0010 in taxes. How it actually works is that you pay 5% on the first $10,000 and 10% only on the dollars above $10,000. If you earn $9,999, you pay $499.95. But if you earn $10,001, you will pay $500.10. You earned an additional $2 and paid an additional $0.15 in taxes. 5 cents on the 10 dollar and 10 cents on the 10 zero first dollar of course there are all sorts of weird interactions between taxes and government programs especially when someone is receiving certain government benefits it is totally possible for each dollar you earn to be taxed back one for one or worse in that case there is a genuine disincentive to work more hours but for a normal worker thinking about how many hours they can work before they end up in a higher tax bracket you will never earn less by working more. So just work as much as you like. Edit. Typo. I have met people who have sworn they are taking home less money because they went up a tax bracket. It makes me wonder how bad their finances are that they really don't know how much money they earn. Not quite on point. A lot of people don't understand that co-signing a loan means that you are on the hook for the loan as much as the other person. The car gets repoed, and then they are shocked that their wages are getting garnished. Co-signing is not you saying you think your friend is a cool dude who is good for it, you are saying you will pay for it if they don't. And they want you on the hook, because they think there is a good chance the main applicant is a deadbeat. Basically, don't cost inches for anybody. That's why I prefer the term guarantor. Because you guarantee that you'll pay if the other person can't. Fighting words is not a defense to battery, it just means that the government can prosecute face-to-face -face insults likely to lead to a breach of the peace. Eater, not to say that provocation defenses don't exist dependent on jurisdiction, but fighting words in the US refers to an exception to the First Amendment. Oh yes. There was a big argument on Reddit the other day about whether spitting in someone's face is illegal. Hint, yes. It's specifically unalt in almost all developed countries. Generally, however, there's nothing you can say to someone that justifies them hitting you. The guy who initiates the physical action or reasonably construed immediate threat of, e.g., jerking your fist towards someone after threatening them, is the one who's broken the law, not the guy who called him backslash whatever backslash. Not a lawyer, but as someone who watches a lot of slash r slash public freak out videos with people screaming, it's illegal to film me without my permission. I would say that. In most cases you don't need someone's permission to film in a public place where there is no expectancy of privacy. If it were a public bathroom, then yeah that might be a problem, but filming at a park or on the sidewalk is not illegal. There's this great video from Wonder Shoz and Kinda of related to this that cracks me up so much. In my old neighborhood we had serious issues with people speeding down the street in the mornings when kids walk to school. Called the cops, half mile away, constantly. Oh, it's during our shift change, can't really put someone there at random days. My husband was out of work at the time and bored. He took our old video camera, no tape, and pretended to film people. Man, they slowed at first. They they started getting pussy. Summer jumped out of his GF's car and started yelling you can't film me and ordered slurs. Hubby was just saying yes I can. Public street in calm voice. GF is calling cops. They show. Supervisor shows and says this dude is a known entity we just don't want you hurt to my 64, 320 pound husband who laughed. 
there were more of these types of encounters. Someone finally told cops he was filming kids, as in being a perv. Cops come to door and tell us this. We explain. They are fine with it. Start ignoring calls that point to it being us. But really? Cause you can't drive 25 miles per hour when kids are walking to school? I'm not driving, I'm traveling. That one is incredibly hilarious when it's on video and shared. Officer, I'm not driving under the influence, I'm traveling at it. Here's a live PD link of a similar situation. Season 2 live PD clip it's not exactly the quote, but close to it. Also the stop was for license plate out. I didn't know I needed a driver's license, and I'm traveling in my car. I'm not like driving are both uttered. Yaltube. That commercial use of a photograph means selling the photograph. Commercial use means that there is an implied endorsement. You can take and sell photos of Eric Clapton all day long. Put that same photo in an advertisement for a certain guitar without a release and you can be sued. There is a big problem now with that on YouTube and Bitcoin. They cannot arrest a husband and wife for the same crime. I got the worst ducking attorneys. Freedom of speech and censorship laws do not apply on social media. If your comments or posts get deleted by an administrator it is not infringing on your rights. Have you been arrested for your statements? Have you been prosecuted for saying something? If the answer is no, then chill out. Edit, Canada. You even have to read and agree with their terms before creating an account so you just shut up. If you live together for X period of time, you're automatically legally married. There are different time periods for different purposes, and being common law doesn't always have the same effect as being married. So for example your employer might give your partner spousal benefits after one year, but division of property laws might only apply after three. And all of this varies from one place to another. Some places don't have division of property laws for common law spouses, for example. In the US, only 8 out of 50 states have any form of common law, and most of them require more than just cohabitation. You have to actually present yourself as a married couple. The sheer number of times I've heard someone say we are common law in New York City is absurd, considering New York abolished common law marriage in 1933. The legal limit for back in drunk driving. There is no such thing. The common refrain you hear, especially from media outlets that have no idea what the duck they are talking about, is that there's a legal limit to the amount of alcohol you can safely have in your system and legally drive a car. No. Simply no. It doesn't exist. There is a statutorily established Peretti limit in every state. This means that, if you are driving, and your back is over that limit, you are Peretti intoxicated, and the state doesn't require any more evidence to convict you. But, if you are under that limit you can still be convicted of drunk driving or driving while intoxicated. The state will have to provide additional evidence to do so. So, even though you've just had one, or have a back under the legal limit, you can still get arrested and convicted of drunk driving slash twee slash dui slash oui, or whatever else your state calls it. Can you come to we, and tell the people here that, dui culture is bad here. In many countries escaping from prison is not an offense, because the desire to be free is so inherent to humans, that it needs to be respected. This is providing you don't commit another felony while escaping, like killing a guard. Edit, my first award ever. Many thanks. Germany is one of those countries. Not a law, but how people believe the polygraph tells the truth. The polygraph is, cannot be used as evidence in court. Therefore, not science. Might as well use the Rauer Gboard. Which is why you should always reject any offer especially by police to take one. All it does is give the mammo for the trial by media. When they go public and say, this guy failed the poly the public usually automatically connects that with actual guilt. Now, but here's one that bounces around legal advice every couple months. The age of majority in Mississippi is 21, so people say your parents control your life until then, and you can't move out without permission, until you are 21. The truth is, that the law means they have an obligation to provide for you, until you are 21, you can move out at 18, and not face any penalty, or be forced to return. Although the age for Mississippi emancipation is officially 21, this only refers to emancipation from a parent's obligation to support their young adult financially, 
in Mississippi, individuals age 18 and older may vote, enter into legal contracts, take legal action against others, and be sued for damages. Similarly, an individual age 18 or older who moves out of his parents' home is not considered a runaway in Mississippi and is not legally required to return to the family home. What duties does that impose on the parents? They just have to make the home available and provide food. Not a lawyer. But, unfair firings are oftentimes not illegal. People often norm that, if they were treated unfairly at work, like getting fired for something trivial that someone else got away with, that some kind of law has been broken, and that they have a strong case for suing. In most cases this is not true. There are only a very few reasons for firing that get a company in trouble. Firing for race, color, national origin, religion, sex, age, or disability is illegal in all states. Firing for anything else varies from state to state. In many states this means you can be fired for a medical condition, your sexual orientation, tattoos, that stupid look on your face, your weight, etc. Or just because I'm not attracted to you. Yup. Put another way, discrimination is illegal. No, certain very specific kinds of discrimination are illegal. All the rest are totally okay. That an undercover cop has to tell a target that they are undercover if they are asked. When will these people finally understand that this literally defies the purpose of undercover cops? Not technically a law, but life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness is not in the constitution. Hear it all the time and it drives me crazy. I feel like, if you only learned about them in elementary school, confusing lines from the Declaration of Independence with the preamble to the Constitution isn't the most unreasonable thing. If a teacher is more than 15 minutes late, you're legally allowed to go home. Technically you're legally allowed to go home whenever you want, but you still have to deal with whatever consequences the school gives you. Brothel laws at universities. There are no laws stating that three or more women in one house constitutes a brothel. I've never heard of this before. Lots of people seem to think that private businesses have to respect your freedom of speech. Yes. I'm so happy I knew this during my first job in retail. Had several customers accuse me of denying their freedom of speech for telling them to leave if they were disrespecting other customers or employees. Not a lawyer, but many people think that black belts in martial arts have to register their hands as deadly weapons. It pains me when people say this. You can tell who's lying there are off when they say my hands are registered as a deadly weapon, since I'm a black belt in, insert martial art here. A joke taken too far. Circumstantial evidence. Often pop culture portrayal of criminal law tries to draw a distinction between hard evidence, like blood at the scene or a weapon in the suspect's possession, from circumstantial evidence, such as what a witness heard or mismatched entries in a calendar, that contradict an alibi. How often have you heard a TV suspect, when confronted with some facts, say that's all circumstantial, it's not enough to convict me. The viewer is left with the impression that the facts presented don't matter and that the law weighs circumstantial evidence less. In reality, the law doesn't afford any more weight to one type of evidence or another. There isn't even a formal distinction in criminal rules between the two. There is an academic distinction. Hard evidence, also called direct, is based on direct observation and doesn't require any explanation beyond the facts themselves. Circumstantial evidence requires some inference to arrive at the important fact to be proved. For example, a witness testifying that he saw the suspect stab the victim is direct evidence of the action of stabbing. But that witness could then testify that before the stabbing, he heard the suspect demand that the victim hand over his wallet in the victim refuse. This is circumstantial evidence of motive. You can infer that the suspect then stabbed the victim because he wanted the wallet and didn't get it when asked. Circumstantial evidence is often vital to establish certain criminal element like motive that can't directly be observed. But there is no get out of jail free card just because evidence is circumstantial. If your wife hears you plotting to kill her and sees your axe sharpening equipment in the attic, your neighbor finds your copy of how to kill your wife and get away with it, and you write an email to your brother saying I'm going to do it tonight, that hoe cooked my steak well done, you're probably going to jail for murder. It's irrelevant that you destroyed your axe, 
cleaned the basement perfectly, ensured no witnesses, and fed the body to pigs. Circumstantial evidence can be enough. I've heard that virtually all evidence is circumstantial fingerprints on a murder weapon, the victim's blood on your clothes, even a detailed plan to do exactly what happened, because there are alternative explanations, the only direct evidence out there would be things like video of you committing the crime, while presenting your idea to the camera, for example, or law enforcement directly witnessing you commit it. Because of this, most cases are built on connecting the evidence circumstantial or not into a compelling narrative to establish guilt beyond any reasonable doubt before an established authority to judge, namely a jury of your peers or a judge themselves. Am I generally understanding this correctly, or am I just derping along here? I'm a law student and definitely self-defense. Even though the law exists people in my country really think it's broader than it actually is. People tend to forget the proportional response part. Bird law. Filibuster. Cop, not a lawyer. Miranda advisements only are provided when your statement is being taken while in custody. Coercion. A cop doesn't have to read you your rights if he arrests you, but doesn't ask you questions after the fact. Many friends of friends ask me hey my buddy got popped for a DUI, but the cop didn't read him his rights, does he get off? The answer is almost always no. I see this in court all the time, especially at the initial bond appearance. Hey judge you gotta let me go, the cop didn't read me my rights. Yeah he didn't read them, because he wasn't going to ask you any questions, he just happened to come across a guy who has a warrant. If the teacher isn't here within 15 minutes we're legally allowed to leave. I like this one because like, you're always legally allowed to leave. It's school not a prison. At least college. IDK what is due, if that had happened in high school. I guess leave. If a trooper isn't wearing his hat, when he writes you a ticket, it's automatically dismissed. Nope. He can be wearing a clown costume and have the same authority. I would argue that it would have more authority because anybody who has the balls to write me a ticket while dressed as a clown is going to get a lot more respect out of me. Almost all of these could be a real law somewhere. That's why any lawyer would ask what place you're talking about. Just because it isn't a law in your city, state doesn't mean it isn't a real law somewhere. Yeah I wish all the lawyers in this thread could just state country and possibly region at the start of their comments. That because you insist you live in a free country means you go anywhere and do anything you want. When my parents die, the government is going to seize a big chunk of the inheritance and I'll get nothing. In the US this is a very common misconception. Although state inheritance taxes vary, the US federal taxes on inheritance don't actually kick in until the estate's value exceeds 5 million US dollars. So, for the vast majority of working class folks, the federal inheritance tax won't have any effect. But people will still talk to their family lawyers and ask about how much Uncle Sam is taking away when mom or dad die. I had a coworker who was a southern Kentucky farm boy through and through. Very rural in accent and mannerisms, but very sharp and hardworking, and genuinely one of the best co-workers I've worked with. And he'd often talk about the family farm. He was mad because once his grandfather part, the government is going to want a big piece of the estate and we'll have to sell off the family farm. I told him up look up the estate laws because the minimums on that were in the millions of dollars range. Well yeah, it's an 8 000 acre farm with dozens of employees. I then learned that this very rural farm boy was one of the heirs to some kind of enormous agriculture operation. A lot of people think you have to wait 48 hours to report a disappearance to the police. That is simply false, and waiting that long puts the person at risk even more. That Costco making you wear a mask violates your constitutional rights. Only the government can violate your constitutional rights. Protection from government overreaches what the constitution is for. It does not regulate private companies. What's a law that isn't real, that normal people insist exists? Believing that freedom of speech protection laws apply to private corporations. E.g. Crying freedom of speech. When Alex Jones is cut off YouTube, or if Twitter, or Facebook deletes something. 
you are legally protected from the government preventing your freedom of speech, but you have no such protections with Vimeo or any other private corporation. Social media platforms are so widely accepted, I think people sometimes forget they remain private organizations, who can do what they want for the most part. I think one thing we should definitely point out is, just because something isn't technically a law, doesn't mean you can't get arrested for it, at least in the US. And, we should always point out, that the United States has more laws than they even know exists, and law enforcement is not required to understand any of them. So, just because Google claims something, doesn't mean it is true, or will hold up. I suggest anyone who is dabbling in law, illegal or legally, give this video a watch. He goes over multiple things, including the 27,000 page book that has all of our laws and no one has read. He also goes over how certain things don't even need to be illegal in your state, or in the US. There are laws that state, if something is illegal in any country, they can charge you for it. And, of course, the main topic he discusses, is why you should never speak to law enforcement under any circumstances. Even if you're 100% innocent, you say nothing. Yautu. That common civil liberty protections restrict individuals or organizations. Freedom of press, speech, due process, etc. only restrict the government. For example, most organizations can restrict your speech, based on their internal policies. There are instances, where an organization has to provide certain protections, based on federal funding e. schools implementing Title IX. I'm a lawyer I'm just here, to see the laws I don't know, are fake also 90% of the time someone says first amendment they don't know anything about what they're talking about, and surprisingly the Jehovah's Witnesses are the leaders in a good chunk of first damn case law. Can you elaborate on the JW claim? Possession is not 9 tenths of the law and that saying doesn't mean anything. Well, it means something, in that in the context, that a lot of real property law and property torts are concerned with possession. But possession itself doesn't magically confer rights, usually. James Harden isn't exempt from traveling. You do have the right to a fair trial. And the only people fighting to keep that right for you are the same ones you hear about suing McDonald's for 200 million dollars. Oh and also that trial you always hear people point to about frivolous lawsuits where the lady spilled hot coffee on her lap. That was absolutely McDonald's fault, they lost, and they had to change how they brew their coffee because of it. Businesses will stop at nothing to take away your right to a fair trial. Remember that. The lady was severely injured. We were misled by the media, to believe it was a little burn. But when I saw the pictures of that lady it was horrible. Also I have heard from McDonald's employees they sometimes still serve the coffee way too hot. I'm a lawyer. This is not a law that doesn't exist, but a law that is misunderstood. Typically, you can't just go get a restraining order against anybody. Most states have specific laws for who you can get restraining orders against, typically household members or former romantic interests. Usually, it's only in domestic violence cases, or for victims of crimes. You can't just get a restraining order and comically use it to keep someone 100 feet away. In the United States, at least. Search my car? You're gonna need a warrant for that. In the US, the police don't need a warrant to search your car. They just need probable cause, or for you to stupidly give them consent. No, but they can't hold you indefinitely, so if you refuse the search and there isn't any reason for them to keep you, like a prior warrant, or drug something reasonably suspicious in plain sight, they can't detain you. Fair Hill just a friendly reminder to always refuse search requests. If they had a reason they wouldn't have to ask. If they jam you up anyway call a lawyer. Cops are not there to help you. Edited for clarity, and additional comments. The elites don't want you to know this, but the ducks at the park are free. You can take them home. But not the swans, they belong to the queen. Not a lawyer. It's illegal to put rubbish into someone else's bin. Nope. E. For clarity, I'm talking about the household bins that go out for collection once a week, not dumpsters and such. Putting rubbish into someone else's bin sounds like a vaguely sexual British euphemism. A real, but widely misunderstood law is HIPAA. 
people think it protects you from literally any discussion of your health issues by anyone at all. Nope. Not even close. Cop has to tell you they're a cop. If they are arresting, detaining, or a traffic stop, then yeah, but other than a few state laws, they don't have to tell you choose. Turns out, when they actually have to, sometimes they still don't. Turns out, there are a lot of laws that cops don't follow. Turns out, there are a lot of laws that cops don't follow. I saw a documentary about cops in my area and how they did their jobs. Turns out basically, unless they do it too many times or it's a giant crime, like bank robbery, murder, assault, they can get away free. Leaving a store without buying anything is 100% legal. Why would anyone think this is illegal? Oh no, the store doesn't have what I wanted, guess I need to buy something, so I'm allowed to leave. Freedom of, usually a right protected by the first amendment, and, most commonly, especially recently, speech. Not that it isn't real per se, but it's not what most people think it is. The right protects you from state action. It doesn't mean you can say slash do whatever you want without consequences. That hate speech is unlawful. And the corollary, that there is some kind of hate speech exception to the first amendment, whether by statute, or by judicial doctrine. Nope. There is such a thing as unlawful or illegal speech, such as harriment, making threats or inciting violence, depending on circumstances, or fraud. And some examples of it may also be hateful. But the hatefulness isn't the basis for the illegality. In Denmark we have a law called Janteloven, which basically means, don't think you are special or better than others. Even though the law doesn't exist, many Danes live by it. As a keen viewer of angry people videos on the internet, in a public place, you can't record me, I haven't given you permission. Amusingly, this is often followed by, I know my rights, and then some form of assault, while being videotaped in high resolution by the victim. People's notion of freedom. Don't get me wrong. It'll be the first person to argue against the slightest infringement of our constitutional rights, but you don't get a free par to be a rick under the guise of freedom. For example, the First Amendment, really the entire Bill of Rights, applies to state actors. Absence of anti-discrimination statute or other generally applicable law, if you find some non gov actor has inconvenienced you, or offended you in any way, it's not an affront to your civil liberties. So when a private company like Costco says stay off my private property, unless you have a mask, James Madison isn't rolling in his grave. You need to establish motive, to find someone guilty of a crime. It makes for better TV for sure, but it is not a required element of the crime. It may help establish the mens rea element the mental state required to commit the crime but it absolutely is not required to establish some kind of game that the murderer would stand to gain. Not a lawyer and this may vary by states, but where I'm it was illegal for my grandfather to divorce grandma was, was a nursing home with Alzheimer's for several years. All his children's way of thinking was they didn't want her to inherit the money which would, in turn all go to the state and Medicare. Disinherit a spouse was what I meant not divorce. Surprise no one has mentioned Miranda law and how people think if they, the police, don't read it out to you upon arrest, the case can be dismissed edit. Miranda law equals your rights when arrested. In the original case Miranda tried to say it wasn't fair and that he should be let go and yet all his case did was mean they released him, read him the rights he was arguing about and immediately re-arrested him. It's not illegal to shout fire in a movie theater. I won't say I isn't real, because it obviously is, but Marizo that people insist it exists in areas where it almost certainly does not. Pretty much anything in the US. Constitution only applies to the US. Government. For instance, the government can't restrict your right to free speech, but private companies can. Always irks me when people talk about free speech on Facebook or some other private media platform or private property. Oh my. You watched until the end? That's ducking awesome dude. Thanks for watching.